Today we are having a speaker who is one of our own, who's been with us probably the longest. And uh, I'd like to have an intro for her. Nani, uh, Nashami, are you there? Uh, Dr. Eda Zaibi Tatu is a medical doctor and a counseling psychologist. She is the founder of Wastahili Family Wellness Center uh, 2018. Wastahili's vision, happy, healthy families rooted in universal values. Wastahili's motto is, when solving problems, dig at the roots instead of hacking at leaves. As a result of what Wastahili does, youth who are the future leaders of this nation are empowered to become best version of themselves. Women and girls are empowered to regain their God-given feminine identity through fertility education and medical management. Crisis pregnancy counseling and post-abortion syndrome healing. We empower parents to connect, reconcile with their children through parenting coaching. We do marriage and family counseling as well as coaching in addiction recovery, life skills, character, and holistic health. Wastahili are trainers of trainers uh, and certified mediators. Dr. Eda is passionate about holistic and mental health and gives corporate health talks to public and private institutions like schools, universities, and corporations. Dr. Eda is the proud mom of four adult children and is the grandmother of one delightful granddaughter. I love the word delightful. She is a passionate pro-life and pro-family advocate. The truth about you heals you. Dr. Eda, you are amazing. Karibu. Thank you very much for that um, introduction. I hope I'll get time. Is the screen sharing OPP? OPP, yes. you're muted. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. So I thought that um, perhaps a better title rather than social media parenting. The topic was social media parenting. But I thought maybe we could talk about parenting in the digital age and uh, 21st century because social media parenting is just one part of it and probably there could be a follow-up to that. Because mm. I was hoping to do an in introduction uh, and discuss briefly the human life cycle, marriage parenting and the impact on, of, on the digital world, on the human life cycle, a sentence or two about the theology of the body, managing screen time, managing digital devices, protecting children from pornography, the six A's of uh, positive parenting and the resources. Okay, so I'm a child of the 60s. Um, and that was the, the middle of the sexual revolution. I didn't know what was going on at the time, but women were supposedly liberated from slavery of men and the patriarchal institutions and liberated from their husbands. And in the process, we got the sexual revolution. And actually, we are 63 years down. And what many of you parents are seeing, um, very confusing about the destruction of life and family, has been very a very deliberate destruction of the family. And here you see the Beatles. I used to listen to the Beatles on the radio and on the airwaves. And yeah. Is that the, it is said that Satan is the prince of the air also because he he's determined to destroy the natural family and family values. Huh? So these are the kind of uh, jokes we share in our WhatsApp groups. We were young teenagers in the 70s and the 80s, and this is the kind of phones we had. They were landlines, and uh, we were in the we were in the phone book. So anybody could call you and if, if a, 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 a boy called you and your father picked the phone, you were dead. 
So this is how we blocked people in the 1980s. Yeah? Okay, so um, I, I appeared on the Lin Gugi show um, on April the 1st, and it was called, it was called Christians versus LGBTQ. And this was as a, a follow-up to the Supreme Court ruling, which um, allowed the registration of uh, LGBTQ organizations. And there was a very big uproar in the country. And then after that, I got a lot of phone calls um, from parents whose children were um, in the uh, what we call the, the end stage of the sexual revolution, LGBTQ, some were identifying as uh, transgender, which uh, is a, a, a lady who identifies as a man and a man or a man who identifies as a woman, or people suffering from same sex attraction. So I got a lot of phone calls after that with people struggling with these issues and the uh, yeah, so we have the sexual revolution ideology. Uh, it's important that parents understand that the sexual revolution ideology is actually a religion on itself. So like satanic re re uh, religion. So whenever you see SRHR, just know that it's about LGBTQ rights, uh, redefinition of the family, abortion, which is deliberate killing of the pre-born person, sexual rights for youth without parental consent and comprehensive sexuality education. People have always been talking about the um, pro-life people being against comprehensive sexuality education, but what I will show you next will help you to understand why. I want to give hope to parents because uh, parenthood is sneaky. You think you're just raising a child teaching this little person how to be and live in this chaotic world. But in truth, you're learning and growing right alongside them. So um, if your heart remains open and your mind conscious, you'll find that parenthood is the ultimate journey of self-discovery and that through raising this precious being that has been entrusted in your care, you rise to your fullest potential. I thought that was a word of encouragement because what I'm going to show you probably will be quite discouraging in the short term. Yeah, so um, the W and UN agenda is about sexualizing kids. Uh, it's part of the UN agenda 2030. So the World Health Organization uh, instructs school to encourage little children to engage in homosexual relationships with their friends. A school poster uh, shows two girls finding a safe place and boys agreeing to have sex. So if your school, if your child is in a school that is having comprehensive sexuality education, uh, they are no longer hiding. And so this is part of UNESCO, United Nations and Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah, so this is it. Um, they're being taught about masturbation, um, sexual, same sexual attraction, sexual stimulation, Nine-year-old children should learn about having sexual intercourse, experience sex using the internet and mobile phones and learning different sexual techniques. And this is the evidence, nine to 12 years, five to eight years need to le learn how to, to masturbate and to that gender is a spectrum and today they can be a girl, tomorrow they can be a boy. And Doctors are actually advertising on TV, children's channels, that if they feel like they're a boy or a girl, they can go for medical transition or surgical transitions. This is what's happening in the world today. Um, yeah, schools must equip children to have sexual partners. Okay. Page 17, United Nations explains that this guide is intended to help children build relationships with romantic or sexual partners and children are sexual from birth. Okay, so this is all the evidence. Huh? You can look it up for yourself. Uh, I'm not lying. This is what we have been warning about and everybody was telling us that we're against teaching children about sexuality but we are about teaching children the right sexuality in the context of family and marriage. 
The American Medical Association has said that the sex of the child should not be on the birth certificate. And the American Academy of Pediatrics has said, affirmative care gives hormone blockers to minors. So a child who is not able to vote, not able to drive, not allowed to inherit property, is allowed to get surgical and um, what they call gender reassignment surgery and medical transitions. So the sexual revolution ideology has corrupted everything, including medicine. And we are no longer practicing medicine. We're no long, longer practicing health. And that is why I do not subscribe to those organizations. So this is the human life cycle. Um, we are, I'm a member of um, Linda Vijana Initiative. So if you check on YouTube, you'll be able to understand the human life cycle in detail. And with God at the center, we have um, the man and the women, woman coming together in holy matrimony and marriage is for the purpose of education and uh, for the procreation and education of children as well as the good of the spouses. And the pregnancy is which is supposed to occur within marriage. And then this gives rise to a child who is supposed to be raised in a nuclear family, a loving nuclear family. Every child is, has a right to be welcomed into a loving family with a, his, his or her own mother and father raised by them. And the whole purpose of life is uh, to be a part of the community, um, giving, uh, serving God in our, in our gift. And each of us has a gift. And at the end of our life, if we are able to, to fulfill our purpose, according to God's will, we shall go back to the Father. If not, we shall be sent away from the Father. Uh, and that is the purpose of our life. And both men and women represent half of humanity. Therefore, we cannot say that they, can, they are interchangeable and our sexuality is directly intertwined with our purpose. Men have their primary roles, in the family, women have the primary roles and the secondary roles. Primary roles of women is to be nurturers. We nurture a um, new life in our womb and we also nurture the family. And men, a primary role is protection and a formation of the family members and gives identity to the family members. So when you hear about uh, sexual and reproductive health and rights and sexual revolution ideology, it is anti-family. And so if, if you destroy anything within the human life cycle, you will ultimately have destroyed humanity. So that introduction was very important for you to understand that we are actually 63 years down the line from the sexual revolution. And um, one day probably I will be able to give that explanation. Yeah, so I've talked about uh, those things. What you need to know about uh, parenting is that there are no parenting gaps. And the best gift you can give your child is united parents committed to each other and uh, committed to bringing up their child. Yeah, so our dignity comes from the fact that God was created, a man was created in God's image and likeness, male and female. And we are co-creators with God. And uh, children, us, we are only stewards of our children. They don't belong to us. According to the human life cycle, we're supposed to raise up a child and bring them back to the father. At the end of their life, after they have learned from us how to have character. So the family's responsibility is to protect the children. In this case, we are uh, sexualization by the media and the state. As we said, there are no parenting gaps. They can be sexualized by the house help. They can be sexualized by neighbors. Uh, there are so many dangers out there. The primary, uh, the home is the, the first school of life and the, the, the primary teaching agent and the parents are supposed to be the first teachers. One of the aims of SRHR ideology is to remove parents as teachers so that they can have direct access to your child. Um, so we are expected to have self-control, commitment, and compassion to help our children develop uh, Christ-like characters. And conscience is a person's moral sense of right and wrong, which we're trying to build in our children. So all kinds of broken families are now depicted in pictures as equal. Homosexuality is offered as a, a normal option to destroy the sense of shame in our child. And um, yes, yeah, so those are the resources. 
So what is the attraction and impact of the digital world? Yeah, The advent of the internet has brought a lot of good, but also many dangers. If not managed well, damage us and our families. And the digital world is both attractive and addictive and impacts ourselves and our children. And so we need to know how to help our children manage the digital world. So you have social media sites, uh, which uh, include Snapchat, Google. Uh, we have the icons here, Facebook. We have, um, it, uh, we have TikTok, we have WhatsApp, we have Twitter, we have Instagram, we have YouTube, and we have Telegram here. Yeah, so the devices are used for leisure, education, work, and connection. Basically to connect with our relatives, but um, there are also other things that happen as a result. Yeah, so we need to know, have the latest news, watching movies. Basically we need to know about, all of us are looking for God and we have a God-shaped hole. And after the fall of man, we tend to look for God in the wrong faces and places because we need affirmation and to be a reminder of our intrinsic worth and value. So if that's not happening in the home of origin, then we'll look for it outside. Yeah, so we look for perfect beauty, love, home and truth. That's what all of us are craving for, even in nature, sunset, uh, sunsets, beautiful sunsets. Human nature is that I am a spirit and I have a soul and I live in a body. The soul consists of the mind, emotions, and the free will. Um, you know, um, these things were never taught in medical school. They were never taught in uh, um, when I was studying mental health, but there's no way you can treat somebody without knowing his nature. So it's important to remember human nature. Um, the dangers of the digital world include pornography. Uh, we have gaming addictions. We have depression, low self-worth. Uh, fear of missing out uh, is real. Social media has been found to increase depression and loneliness. Research reveals social media platforms like Pace, Facebook can really affect your mental health, especially because of that idea of comparing yourself to other people. We also have an explosion of attention deficit type of activity disorder. We have cyber uh, bullying, we have grooming and abuse. And uh, a study showed that uh, 80, about 80% 80 of uh, 16 to 24 year olds said that social media impacted their happiness, self-esteem, anxiety, loneliness, and depression. And you know that we are having an explosion of suicide in this exact age group. So um, social media can be directly related to that. There's also a, a movie you can get on Netflix called The Social Dilemma. The social media platforms have been designed as experts by experts to be as addictive as possible. They know how to get hookers, uh, users hooked. So the more users hooked onto their platforms and game, games, the more uh, money they get. People like uh, Steve Jobs and uh, um, the, the people who designed these programs would not even allow their own children to play on these, on these devices which showed you uh, that they, um, they, they used to really limit their, their children's screen time and monitor it. But it's the same thing that they want us to use on our children. Eh? So it's important to know where our human dignity comes from, uh, that we're made in the image and likeness of God, that we are body, both bodily and spiritual beings. We're called to be a gift to each other and we need character strength in order to prevent spending too much time on gadgets. And love, which is portrayed in the media with a huge love heart is not a fuzzy feeling, but a decision to, be, to, to have commitment to the good of the other. And the greatest good we can wish for another is that they be united with God. So our children experience God through the way we communicate with them. And uh, it's important that we desire all our desires are rightly ordered towards the good, which is God. And you know that we live in a broken world after the fall. And so we all have weakened and disordered passions and a misdirection of passions. Therefore, when you're parenting, as in the first slide, it's also important to know about your own passions 
so that you're able to impart the right values. This is a typical family today. As you can see, the father has the remote control towards the TV. Everybody's on their phones. And uh, these ones are way too young to be even having internet access because their brains have not even developed and the mother is on the phone. This is not family, yeah? This is not how family life was supposed to be. So we have children as young as this, and now we're uh, on, on mobile devices, uh, on the internet, and we need this, a child like this can be able to log into YouTube and get a pornographic uh, video anytime. So we need to learn about how to manage screen time. And this child should never even have been alone on the phone in the first place. And this is very common, especially in middle and upper class homes. Huh? So most parents are aware, unaware of the recommendations for physical activity and screen time. Children need a lot of physical activity, yeah? So studies have shown that 95% of preschoolers had an average of two hours per day on weekends. And this is totally unacceptable, huh? because the, their children's brains are still growing and they haven't uh, developed the prefrontal cortex of the brain. So studies uh, effects have shown that preschoolers have poorer performance on developmental screening tests. In primary school, they have uh, lower, uh, pupils have lower scores on cognitive assessments. They have a lot of ADHD. Of course, the big pharmaceutical companies are making huge profits from drugs for ADHD, but it's just about screen time. Adolescents, as we said, uh, report depression, eating disorders, obesity, and poor quality of life. Um, there's a lot of trauma like cyberbullying, uh, bullying, violence, and pornography. Many people who, uh, who are addicted to pornography today report that they first encountered it online. So monitoring online sites with their peers, uh, affects their self-esteem and its uh, platforms for illicit behaviors. Okay, so this is what you have. Eh? You have a situation where someone feels that she really has friends online, but it's a false illusion. You have 2,000, 3,000, 10,000 friends on Facebook and you can't turn to any of them when you're depressed. Those are not friends. And then when you get a, uh, a like, uh, you get a high which is called a dopamine rush, which is exactly the same as what happens when you drink alcohol or you use cocaine. So giving your children these devices when they're not ready for it, the same as giving your child cocaine or opening the alcohol cabinet and saying, here, yeah, take what you want, yeah? So um, this is the feeling that they get and it's very addictive, yeah? So the recommendations are that less than 18 months, no, there should be no recreational screen viewing at all. And only online chatting with trusted adults. For example, you can bring the phone and they, they can talk online with their grandparents who are far away, something like that. So up to seven years, a maximum of one hour a day, preferably in three separate segments and with supervision, yeah ensure that other essential activities are attended to first within the lines uh, limits agreed previously, like sleep, exercise, family time, like dinner, spirituality, and schoolwork, family prayer time. Yeah, so um, the parents should never contradict each other and you should cultivate good habits as early as possible consistently and provide good alternatives. Like when you're telling them no screen time, let there, let there be fun, family time games, good books to read in the house. Watch what they are watching with them, supervision. Asking questions helps critical thinking and character formation. So um, you may cast uh, what is on the phone onto a bigger screen. Some families do that. So that the, kid, the family can enjoy communal uh, activity like cartoons, and animal documentaries. I want to warn you that cartoons have also been taken um, hijacked. So uh, not all cartoons are safe, like the, the Flintstones that we used to watch in the 70s. And you, you need to teach temperance, which is a limit to scream time. And you yourself need to be the good example for that, yeah? 
So if the children are older, bond closely with them before having a discussion, uh, gently and tactfully. Um, talk about life goals and how to achieve them and how unhealthy screen time can jeopardize these goals. Um, need to engage relatives and friends who the child respects and undergo counseling if necessary. Um, yeah, we need to be good role models. And studies have shown that the more addicted the parents are to screen time, the stronger the children are likely to be also addicted. And you need to have mutual accountability between adults and children and put away our phones during family and meal time, prayer time and reading books. Yeah, so this is the study. Parents and the effects of uh, excessive parents and excessive screen time in children. You can check that one. So this is a prayer time, uh, which is very, very important in families. And um, in the nuclear family, um, the father is supposed to be the head of the home and he's supposed to be the spiritual director of the home. And uh, there's supposed to be a relationship of mutual love and respect between husband and wife, according to Ephesians 21 to 33, which gives us the blueprint of how families should be. And Proverbs 22, 6 says that train up a child in the way he should go. And when they are old, they shall not depart from it. So children need to have memories like this when they grow up, uh, reading scripture. So next we'll talk about managing the digital devices themselves. We'll talk about connection. The most important thing is a good relationship between the parent and the child as an immunization factor against the children becoming addicted to the Gadgets later, we'll talk about the six A's of positive parenting, uh, the A to J of parenting, positive parenting, and the need for a warm environment for honest and open communication and forming them in the virtues like temperance, fortitude, prudence, and justice. Okay, so the principles to consider, we need to have these uh, gadgets to be a good servant and not a bad master. For example, a knife, um, there's uh, that uh, idea that a knife is a very good um, servant, but not a good master. So a child who is screaming for a knife is a, a good parent will not give it to them. So we need to have guidance about the uses and dangers under supervision. And um, we finally give them when they're young adults and they have shown safe and responsible use of the phone. So we need to consider the brain development and be in control and always have reasonable limits and make sure that we're not harming the dignity of ourselves and others. And our use of the uh, gadgets enables us to become better person and have a deeper connection with others. So this is the knife. You can see a grown up using the knife very responsibly, but if a child, and you can see here, uh, doctors using, um, the scalpel in surgery, but you can imagine giving a scalpel or a knife to a child who is not ready for it, what will happen? Of course, they'll come bleeding. So let these gadgets be our servants. We need to think of the development of the brain. We have the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is in the front, just behind your forehead. And it only develops between 23 to 25 years old, and it's used for problem solving, decision making, <clears throat> sorry, emotional regulation and impulse control. So um, it doesn't make sense for somebody to have these gadgets before that age, although people will dis tend to disagree with me. Um, that is a structure of the brain. Guidelines for management. One, avoid using gadgets as a babysitter for our children. There's some people who leave the child in front on the high chair in front of the TV, which is a disaster. Avoid using gadgets to calm your children because this will interfere with their own ability to set limits, process and manage their emotions. Set up clear rules and time limits for media usage. Children learn best by interacting with people, not with screens. The way we are having a, a webinar here, children don't learn like that. Children learn from 
their primary caregivers. Yeah. So guidelines for management, always praise and encourage self-control. Uh, self so if your child uh, um, chose self-control, always praise them about it because we want to encourage behavior that is um, that we want to, to perpetuate. Avoid giving primary school kids personal phones with access to internet. Um, meanwhile, teaching them how to use them responsibly for later. Let them use our phones for assignments and school chat rooms. Explain family rules in age appropriate ways. Not uh, we're not restricting them, but we're helping them. And explain with stories like cyberbullying. These ones are all over the internet. What happened when children were um, exposed to social media and then they sexted their friends. Sexting is about sending sexually, sexually explicit images of themselves and the internet never forgets. So even in the future, when they're looking for a job, somebody will just pull out this photo that they sent when they were 16 years old and give consequences for breaking rules like timeout from the devices. Um, there should be a gradual progression from a dumb phone to a smartphone um, when they show responsibility. A dumb phone is what we call a mlikamwizi. So a child, so if you want to be in touch with them, can have a mlikamwizi so that you can contact them. But the more they show responsibility, they graduate to a smartphone. Yeah, so a dumb phone has no inter internet access. Use the computer at home for internet homework. Show the child how to use the devices in a measured and responsible way. Place the devices in common places in the house, in full view and frequented by family members like the corridor or in the sitting room, living room. Never have the devices in the bedrooms. Be firm about uh, device free time. Um, like meal times and going for walks. Like you saw in the other picture, we have families, everybody's on the internet. You're supposed to be giving attention to each other, not on the devices. Have device-free days like Sundays, um, church, which is supposed to be set aside for church, personal reflection, outsidings, outings. You can have a technology table where all the devices are put in a common area. For example, if you have a home with adult children, put them all in, uh, on a common table when you're um, having meals. So we need to talk about protection of the devices, and most of all, to be good role models. It's a saying that a monkey see, monkey do. Are we ourselves in control of our devices or are we controlled by them? And I must say that I'm also a culprit of being addicted to my phone it's, uh, at some point. So it's a real struggle. But I remember once when my phone was stolen and I didn't have any money for another one, I had them lick easy for three months. So that was baptism of, uh, is they call it bat baptism of fire? Yeah, so parents need self-control. You see, they copy everything you do, especially the following areas, cell phones, um, not using the phone in front of your children, being selective about what you watch, whether on internet or TV. Children are very acutely aware of what you're watching and they are able to, uh, they're able to break down your, your passcode and identify who you're chatting with. So if you're talking with people that you shouldn't be talking to, your children will know. I can promise you that. Yeah. So protecting our children from pornography, we need to teach our children that sex is a gift from God, which was created to be enjoyed by husband and wife in a marriage covenant and open to life for two purposes, the bonding of the spouses and creation of new life. So parents are co-creators with God. So if you need to be modeling that in your marriage, the children need to see that um, because pornography is a, a sexual deviation from what was designed by God. Sex was not supposed to be watched. Yeah, so this is a, a sexual deviation called voyeurism. Uh, pornography is a multi-billion dollar industry and uh, it's the practice of gaining sexual pleasure from watching others when they are either naked or engaged in sexual activity. 
and it causes us to view others as sex objects for our own gratification rather than persons who are made in God's image and likeness, who are meant to be loved and cherished, not used. Families and individuals are devastated by this and um, it's associated with many negative emotional, psychological and physical health outcomes. Actually, during the COVID uh, pandemic lockdown, uh, many young people reported being addicted to pornography. So um, even um, it has been shown that over 85% of defilers are addicted to pornography. So you have violent behavior, younger age of sexual debut, sexual promiscuity. Remember we had an explosion of teen pregnancy and a distorted view of relationships between men and women. So prevention is to help them live the meaning of their bodies according to God's design. Uh, we can probably have a series on how to discuss sexuality with our children, build the parent-child bond, warn about the dangers of pornography use, never use pornography yourself. Pornography is the gateway drug to all sexual deviations. Actually, most of the, the, the people I have seen suffering from same-sex attraction and uh, feeling that they are trapped in the wrong body, all of them ha uh, had an access to the por uh, pornography on the internet and, and, and controlled access to pornography. So we need to have this, uh, the, the acronym um, THINK. Social media posts um, are often untrue, unkind and becoming. So we need to talk about um, how, how to engage with social media to stay safe and ask if it is glorifying God. We glorify God by posting things which are good, beautiful and truthful. And thus we build God's kingdom. The THINK acronym stands for being true. Whatever you're going to post, is it true? Is it helpful as in building a communal of persons? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Kindness meaning affirming others in their worth and goodness. We have many keyboard warriors. For example, um, um, Twitter is very tox uh, famous for being toxic because people can post anything, but they're hiding behind screens. When you meet these people one-on-one, -on -one, they're actually cowards and they can't say anything. Um, so staying safe, protecting our children online. For example, sexting gets, uh, gets us into trouble with the law. It can be disseminated wi wi widely and it goes viral as, and end up in the wrong hands with the wrong people like pedophiles. And it's never erased from the internet. Never post addresses and your whereabouts. For example, you have parents posting online. They were in Mombasa, we had Diani Beach Hotel. Huh? When it's happening, you know, after the fact, it's very different. But if you, then another thing is that they'll know that you're not at home and that you, you live, for example, in Lovington. So now they can come. Many times people have just been stalked online. They know when you're not home because of the way you're posting and they know exactly where you are. They know what time the buses, the children are picked up. So all these predators can, can find access to your children. So you have levels of security first at the level of the internet provider. Uh, so you can check on the website and look for parental controls, the customer service provider to see what services are on offer. The second level is at the wireless router, which allows the administrator to set security levels to filter off inappropriate content. The third is at the level of the devices. So you can install filtering and protective accountability software to protect them from sexually explicit images. And uh, another thing that happens in the family is a beautiful thing is mutual accountability to each other in the home to show the children that you're not just restricting this, uh, their enjoyment, but you really believe in what you're doing. So give an idea of the sites visited and the apps used, even you yourself, yeah? So the fourth level of security is friends and relatives. So if your children are going uh, outside the home, ask the people that they are going to visit if they have the same layers of protection. If not, encourage them to in install them. If they're still not interested, you might try to rethink about letting your children visit these homes. 
And this thing of sleepover is an absolute no-no because that's when many people have been sexualized inadvertently. Um, advise your children not to use unprotected devices because you can't control where your children will be. What we're emphasizing mainly is that they should have an internal locus of control and personal self-regulation so that when they're out there, they'll be able to uh, see what's bad from a mile. Like there's a 13 year old boy who, was, who has this, uh, who has been trained in character formation by his parents. And he was telling me they went to a home where there was absolutely no control. And so he could see that everything was a disaster and he protected his younger siblings from that and he also refused to watch it. So let the, 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 it, the locus of control be character formation and the child is able to identify what's not good. Assist grandparents to install protections. So se sexting uh, is the practice of sending sexually explicit digital images, videos of yourselves, text messages or emails. And so the studies have been done on that. And there are multiple forms of sexti sexting behavior that has been found in studies. And these children who sext are usually found to have a very low self-esteem and they succumb to peer pressure, romantic crushes and cyber bullying. And there's a need for self-validation to feel seen and wanted, accepted and loved. Because like I showed you that girl who feels like, oh, she got a thousand likes for her, for her, for her post. And probably she was even half dressed. You know that modesty is also a very big problem in our youth. Huh? So if it has already happened, keep calm, report it to the website or up where the image was posted. Try to have it removed as soon as possible. Report to the police. Continue to support your child um, through their pain and tears. Engage other adults, engage professionals, and you might need to also have prayer and fasting. The greatest immunization factor is this, the prevention. And we have the C six A's of positive parenting where we think of the child as both the builder and the building of his character to become the best uh, version of himself with a blueprint from the creator. So there you have the child trying to build the best version of themselves, their character. And there you have the blueprint from the creator who knows what they're supposed to be. So we have um, the building blocks of parenting. We have the, the, the foundation, we have the floorboards, we have the wall, you have the door, and the windows, you have the ceiling, and you have the roof. And what we say, uh, the, the, the most important part is un acceptance, unconditional acceptance. That's the foundation. Then we have the floorboards, which is appreciation. Then you have the walls, which is affection. Then you have the doors, which is availability. And we have the, the, the roof, which is accountability and sorry, the ceiling, which is accountability and the roof, which is authority. The biggest problem we have in our society today, today is parents who are demanding accountability and authority without having put all these other things in place, which constitute love. So this is the love. And then these are the expectations that we have of our child. We try to exert accountability and authority onto your child without having shown the child unconditional love, being available, um, then the whole building falls down and collapses. So I see we're running out of time and uh, probably we can talk about, okay, there's the acceptance. When children have uh, acceptance from their parents, they feel secure. Appreciation is when you actually try to look for a time, try to catch your children doing good things and appreciate them rather than only looking for when they're doing bad things and punishing them. This way, you'll be able to uh, and reinforce positive behavior, yeah? Affection is, um, everybody has their own love language. This is love. Um, children um, uh, call love, they call it, they spell time, L-O-E-V-E. -E. L -O -V -E. Children spell love as time, spending time with them. Without adequate affection, a child, can grow into a teenager who is willing to trade sex for feeling loved. And everybody has their own love language. Some people, love, children love being touched. Others love acts of service. Others love words of affirmation. 
you know, I love you, you are a child of God, you are unique, you are irreplaceable, those kind of things. Eh? Then quality time and receiving gifts. So everybody has their own love language. When you spend time with your child, you'll be able to identify their love language. Parents can be over, overly committed and too busy. Like I say, there's no parenting gap. You might try to have a parenting date once or twice a week. With your, but with each child, try to have a different date with each child. I know a family that has, the father has time with each, each child, the mother has time with each child because each child is different. When you treat them as a group or on mass, it doesn't really work so well. Accountability, uh, being accountable and responsible is a, push, a crucial part of growing up. So this means submitting to others in your family and ministering to their needs. Life is not just about you. Uh, authority, so um, you can exert your authority. There's two types of uh, discipline logical consequences and natural consequences. So we can talk about discipline another time. Um, so that's about building self-esteem. So the most important thing is the child should feel encouraged and feel safe to discuss with us freely without fear of condemnation. And the, a general message should be, we love you and you can turn to us anytime we are here for you. And we want to help you and your journey. Pray for ourselves and our kids. So the young people should be raised to honor life and respect the dignity of each individual. And um, it's not about limiting their freedom because people who have no uh, constraint, no self-control results in ruthless individuals and leads to the dissolution of the supporting social structure. So this is ideally what a family should look like communicating with one another, looking at yourself in the eye, looking at each other in the eye, um, so that you can notice any changes in your child. Um, going out for walks, having indoor games, uh, enjoying a sunset together without gadgets. Uh, that's the summary of parenting. Um, A, affirmation, B, being there, C, communication, D, discipline, E, empathy, F, forgiveness, G, God-centered, H, honest, I, integrity, and G, for joyful. Parenting should be joyful. And remember that this is spiritual warfare. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, cosmic powers over this present darkness, uh, who are against marriage, who are against the family. And um, yeah, so we have... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Ali, uh, yes. I think, I think so we thank can... You. Mm. That's all. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I see. I appreciate. You don't have uh, time for questions. Yeah. And uh, what I suggest is we are going to have a session for panel discussion. People just asking questions based on this yes. and what we've been discussing in the course of the month, well-being. Yeah. So we will have all the counselors. Uh, put in a panel. I know we are a number, there are a number of you there, so that people can ask all the questions. Otherwise, uh, all this material uh, is great. And uh, I know there must be enough questions that are, la are lacking within the hearts of many participants here. But it's already, it's already <clears throat> 8.15. So maybe I will just allow one comment from any of the participants who could be available, uh, who, would, who wants to say something? Yeah, not a, a question. We will, yeah, there are a few people who've written something down there. Thank you, Lillian. I vote for another one talking our kids about sex and sexuality, whatever. Thank you. Yes, so people have comments in the chat. We appreciate that. Again, uh, I know um, next month we are going to organize a session uh, for uh, a panel discussion. People, not slides, but people just asking questions. And we will probably collect questions earlier so that they are presented. 